Hello and welcome back to Strawman Gaming. I've messed up the intro, but that's okay, because this whole video is a disaster. I'm not recording this voiceover live, which is a tricky thing for me, because I've always done it live, I've always had the games distract me, but I recorded... Let's take a step back. <sighs> I record these games with OBS, which is a free piece of software that's great. And I record the audio... The game audio captures on channels 1 and 2, and the mic audio captures on channels 1 and 3. So on channel 1 you have the game audio and mic audio combined, channel 2 is game audio and channel 3 is mic. So when I go to edit the videos, I've got three channels. The first one just gets deleted, the game audio gets uh, audio adjusted slightly, and the third channel, the audio, uh, mic audio, gets exported to Audition to get processed. I didn't understand why I had to have both channels coming in channel 1 just to delete it, so I got rid of that, and it just broke the audio. Like, the game audio is fine, but the, the microphone audio is completely screwed. It, um... I'll leave a clip in, probably here. Yeah, so you see it's pretty messed up and just doesn't sound right. I'm like all drunk and slow and it speeds up and it's distorted, so I'm like, it's, it's unlistenable. So rather than talk as I play, I'm going to talk as I watch. So, I, you know, I'm right there with you. I'm watching this guy play this game. Which might be a good learning experience. You know, what do I do well? What do I do badly? I talk about my microphone too much <laughs> and audio recording it too much, that's for sure. That's okay, I've gone this way, I know we have stuff to do in Analondo. But I never came and got this chest. Which as you can see from the chain being forwards and the back's lock on it, and look we can glitch inside it and see it's horrible mouth and tongue and legs. We can see that it's a mimic. And for the coming five episodes, mimics are something of a theme, and I have something of a problem with them. The uh the game is starting to catch up with me, and my weapon. So it's getting a little bit more difficult to... Um, to you know, to be ahead of the game, having to actually play the game properly and struggle a little bit, which is kind of annoying. I mean, it's good, because, you know, it's, it's, it's good to struggle. You know, it builds character and all that, but... Uh, yeah, oh yeah, look, we got the symbol of Avarice, which is a random drop from Mimics. And makes you just look fantastic. Look at that. I was very happy about it, but, you know, that's lost forever. So instead, you just get to see wearing I don't wear it because, you know, the stats don't matter. Because it looks good enough to be, you know, even if it gave me no protection, I'd probably still wear it. But, it does give you more souls if you wear it. However, your health consistently ticks down when you're wearing it. It gives you like a damage over time bleed effect. Which, uh, is just annoying and untenable to work with. So we have to forego the most important part of this game, which is the fashion for function. So we're going to return to the bonfire and I assume we're going to go to Analondo. I've chosen to wear my horrible spiky gimp head. But having at least one piece of arm of thorns seems like a really useful thing. And I'll explain that when we see why that is. Why do I come back to this bonfire? What am I doing? Oh my goodness! It's hard to stay focused when you're not playing the game. Because I'm just- I haven't even got the audio on. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to listen to my own voice be all distorted as I uh, go through it. So if I'm smart, I've just helped put it to Analondo. Am I smart? I mean, you already know because it said on the screen I clicked on it, but I didn't see. There we go, Analondo. And things I'm think fairly sure I pointed out, like these middle steps are bigger than these outside steps. And the reason for that is there's giants and people here, because Analondo is like the city of the gods. And um, some very tall people like Gwyndolin, Gwyn, and there's a third one. Is Gwyn the Lord of Cinder? There is, I think, I think Gwyndolin is the large woman that you see on a couch. We see that couch later. And then there's his son, 
who's transgender, who's like, I, oh yeah, I got wrecked by these guys because I took Torn up once. That's that smart. But yeah, there's the the other the son daughter. I don't, I don't know if it's his daughter who became a man or his man his son who became a daughter. What it doesn't matter. But yeah, they're there and they're pretty huge as well. They're a boss from Dark Souls One, an optional boss, and a link to a Dark Moon Covenant. But the point is, they're all pretty big. They're like maybe. 15 to 20 foot tall. So these middle steps are for them, despite the fact they're only twice the height of a normal human step, despite being three times the height. But, you know, that's a little uh, game design touch to show that this is there's two kinds of people here. There's man and there's gods. So these silver knights are annoying, and they give us titanite shards. At this point in the game, they're still giving us titanite shards. We do start getting chunks fairly quickly. Not from here, but from... Uh, an area slightly further on. I do like those R1 attacks. I mean, I've commented on that many, many times, and it's just objectively true. I do like those R1 attacks. But they, they, it's the easiest way to play the game, and I don't know why I'd make it more difficult for myself. I could do more heavy attacks. And I'm increasingly thinking about just not equipping a shield, because I so rarely use it. To the point that I could just block with my with my weapon two-handed to get probably. I mean, it blocks. I can't remember exactly. I can't block the menu, which is really stressing me out. Uh, Fifty percent, maybe, of the damage, which is you know not great, but it's better than nothing. I mean, it's fifty percent better than nothing. No, well, it's infinitely better than nothing, but fifty percent less good than a full shield. This was the blacksmith in the first game who is able to infuse your weapon with lightning. And almost everything in Dark Souls, for some reason, is weak or slightly vulnerable to lightning, or at least not highly resistant to it. I mean, the resistances in Dark Souls are weird. Gwyn, the Lord of Cinder, who's like... whose soul is the very embodiment of fire. He is vulnerable to fire. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> it's one of those things... Okay, this guy's got red eyes, so that means he hits significantly harder, but I don't believe I got hit by him. There we go. Textbook. That was a masterclass in how to kill red eye silver knights. I should put that silver knight armor. I've. Yeah. Oh, I do. I think I also take it off almost immediately because it's too heavy. And I don't have a hat light enough to make it work. So back to the mirror armor. Oh, mm. Don't put the arm of this on, it's so ugly. It's just a meme. I'm comparing, at this point, the physical uh, resistance versus the... of the mirror outfit versus the sun set. I'm glad I've made the right choice and gone with the mirror stuff, because it is cool. This is... <laughs> since I don't have much to say about the gameplay, cause it's kind of just happening. I'm not really... I'm not engaged in it properly. I'm finding doing a voiceover very nerve-wracking, which is really weird. You know, I've been doing voiceover for games for close to 200 videos at this point, but I don't know. My heart's racing. I feel uncomfortable. I'm nervous. I sigh a lot when I'm nervous, and I'm feeling myself like there's the urge in my chest. It's like, come on, sigh. Sigh, you need to sigh. Do the, do the sigh. I'm going to do it. Let me, give me Indulge me. I've just welcomed positive energy into my body. And I'm going to try and be calm. So, we're going into the very heart of Anor Londo. To my left is de deep <laughs> Deacons of the Deep dickheads. Which is what I wanted to say, but quite fast. But there's too many Ds there. Too much alliteration, so my mouth just couldn't handle it. And there's lots of them. And directly above me... I wish I'd looked up, because there's... Remember that giant spider that attacked me in the um, Cathedral of the Deep? Actually, oh, I know why. I was going to say, why is there so many things in the Cathedral of the Deep here? And it's because Aldrich is here. And he abandoned his place in the Cathedral and came here. And he's an annoying boss. We do fight him uh, in this episode. And I don't see the sighing. It's because I'm nervous. I apologize. I don't really know what Aldrich is. I could look it up. 
I could look it up now, actually. I mean, look, this, this spider thing's horrible. We've fought them before. This one's slightly tougher. They do curse, and curse sucks. Any instant death mechanic like that is just, uh, it's just annoying. I have, I have no time for it and wish it wasn't there. But we fight this thing. Is it a spider? Like, I think it's more bestial. Like, look at its feet. They aren't spider feet. It's only got six legs, so it's not a spider. It's only got two. I mean, there's lots of facts about it that kind of um, mean it can't possibly be a spider. Get yeah, your face absolutely smashed. Yeah, but it's a. Sp <laughs> I don't know. It's horrifying. I hate it. It's made of skulls. It's weird. And I got the. Was it the Pontiff Ring? Sullivan's Ring? Okay. Spending a lot of time discussing which ring I should get rid of. Recovers HP from critical attacks. Aldrich's Ruby, that's what it's called. Um, and I get very few critical attacks, because that's like after a. I think it's only after like a parry that's a critical. A backstab might be. I'm not sure. Or it might be when you attack directly after an enemy's attack. Because that's counter damage, not um, critical damage. So I, d I don't know exactly when that benefits you. Uh, these jokers. See, we do do that two damage when you roll. Which is useful because there's some enemies that if you, they take damage at certain points, they uh, get staggered. Okay, so this is Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. He casts all sort of nonsense at you. And he... I don't know what he is, because he's the top... Probably like top fifth of him is vaguely human-shaped, and then the rest of him kind of just like a big... He kind of looks like a big turd with teeth in it, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> I don't... I saw him in the intro... Oh, yeah. He, he does love his uh, ludicrously OP uh, soul spear. Yeah, you see him in the interest cinematic, he kind of pours out of his coffin, like, just a sludge. He says devourer of gods, so, and Alondo is the city of the gods, and there's all sorts of weird things that go on here. Oh, this arrow attack is the worst. That just homes in on you, and if you get caught in it, you're dead. Each arrow itself, I think, does very little damage, but it, they stun you, so you just get stunned there, and it goes, ju -ju 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 and you're dead. That's good. I'm gonna die here, because look how stu- ugh. Watching himself is distressing. I'm like, look how much telegraph time he's got. He's raising his staff, he's holding it above his head, he's going to bring it down, disappear, and there's going to be AoE damage, but no, you're going to stand there and hit him with his sword because you're an idiot. Man, how do you guys watch this? But yeah, in Anna Londo, in Dark Souls 1, behind a fireplace, you find Havel's armor. And Havel, he, we encountered Havel in Dark Souls 2? I don't know, I can't remember if we did. Anyway, there's a character called Havel. We certainly had his shield. Yeah, we found his armor in the gutter. Oh, here I'm uh, finding which armor has the highest magic and dark resistance. Just just because, you know, we take very little physical damage. It's all magic and dark, I believe. Or fire. It's elemental. Uh, is, the p <laughs> is the point I'm trying to make. But yeah, we find... Behind a fireplace is a secret door, and in there is several chests and a mimic. The chests contain Havel's armor, but the, the mimic contains an occult club. And it's it's a small club. It's, like, pff, smaller than a baseball bat. If you're in Britain, you'd probably call it a rounders bat. But occult stuff is um, used for basically god-killing. So there is a... Again, I'm going to plug Vati Vidya. He has got a video called Prepare to Cry Havel. Also, I look fabulous. That probably discusses this, but somehow Havel got it in his head that he was going to kill the gods. And in Dark Souls, when you find him exiled in a tower, and it's, I think it's believed he was put there not for the gods' safety, but for his own. Because I don't know about you, but if I was going to fight a god of this world, I'd want to do it with more than just a stick. I mean, that's dismissive of what a club is, but it is a stick at the end of the day. So he, but like, I think he's friends with Gwyn. 
and he's like, okay, go to, have a, like, just, dude, go, go to the tower. I'm not going to kill you, but I could, because you've only got a stick, and I'm, you know, one of the great Lord Souls. So just, just, dude, be, be cool. And we won't murder you. Oh, excuse me. Okay, fighting Aldrich again. Right, whose name I always think should have a T in it somewhere. Because otherwise that's Aldrich. Well, I suppose like rich T, or like a rich person. So old rich is fine. But I, in that word, I think it looks like it should have um, a T. Oh, the telegraph is so long. Why are you like this? Just like, just be a better player. Oh, okay, okay, he's doing the arrows again, which is annoying. I think I do an okay job of avoiding the arrows. The problem is when you've got the arrows and he does the soul spear like that. Oh, I'm probably going to die. Yeah, there it goes. See, that was, I think that hit me. I think my ability to be hit, my, or my iframes ran out before my movement frames began. So I'm literally stun locked to death at that point, which, you know, frustrating and annoying, but I shouldn't have been hit by the first one. But if they're going to make damage unavoidable, just make the first one hit harder. Just have that one kill me. Or maybe there was like a couple of frames I could have pressed dodge in and it would have been fine. I don't know. Getting pretty good at my speedrun strat. Ugh. I don't know what my throat does that gurgling sound. It's horrifying though. Can we make it in the front door without getting hit by fire? Looking good so far. Ooh, nice. I'm going to roll past this guy. Oh, yeah. I just walked into him. I don't think I hurt him. So what have we learned? Avoid arrows. Avoid soul spear. Please avoid this soul spear. Oh, is, is he? Yeah. We can avoid that just by being close to him. See, now I've learned the telegraph and everything. This is it. I'm improving. I wonder what I like. It must be, this must be what it's like. <laughs> the sentence I was going to say is this must be what it's like uh, watching a child learn to speak. And I'm like, I'm not even speak. And that was my, that was the second joke I've just ruined. This must be what it's like watching a child learn to walk. And I was going to say, oh, that must be what it's like to watch a child learn to speak. And I just completely shat the bed on both. So here we are. I'm killing this. Sammy, he just kind of look like a turd. I don't know what he is. I, I will never do a lore video. It's, it's too hard, it's too complicated, and there's too much disagreement on it, to be honest with you. I watch Buddy Vidya and I'm just like, okay, I, that's canon to me. Whatever he says, that's canon, because he does his research. When you go on Reddit and there's all sorts of like contradicting theories and... You know, really well-researched stuff that completely... I don't know if it disagrees because Vati, like, he's, he's a smart dude, don't get me wrong. But he, it, I feel like you can explain bits of Dark Souls lore, but trying to piece together a complete picture of it seems almost impossible. Whoa. That went very green. Hmm. Anyway, that's Aldrich dealt with. So he's... He's a Lord of Cinder. So that's just done two now. And I'm confused at this point. I'm like, okay, I can go upstairs. And there must be something to do upstairs. But I, I was very sure after you killed Aldrich, you... That took you to the dancer fight. So I'm like, what's going on here? I've not... Where's, like, where's the dancer? So I think I'm going back to Firelink to uh, spend my souls, because I've just got a Lord Soul, it's worth, I mean, it's worth just depressingly little. You know, at this point it's worth maybe a third of a level to pop a Lord Soul. And he doesn't have any weapons that I want. From the transposition kiln, how is this guy a Lord of Cinder? Wait. I wish you could fight this guy, because I, like, he, by definition, has to be as strong as all the other lords. But he's pathetic. Maybe like that scene in Star Wars Episode 3, where you suddenly, now you see Yoda fighting, and, oh, okay, it clicks. He's, like, 
incredibly powerful, but he's a, even though he's a little old midget that walks with a stick, he can fight. And that scene is stupid, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but, you know, you could have a thing like that with this. Yeah, Dark Moon Longbow. Why am I yawning so much? It's because I'm suppressing the size. My brain's like, you need more air. You need to sigh or you need to yawn. But I'm not using my fingers, which stimulates your brain. So I'm not typing. I'm not typing. I'm not using a controller, so my brain is just, like, starving for attention. So, Soul of Aldrich, one of the twisted souls steeped in strength, used to acquire many souls, blah, blah, blah. When Aldrich ruminated on the fading of the fire and inspired visions of the coming age of the deep sea, he knew the path would be arduous, but he had no fear he would devour the gods himself. What does that mean? And I... <laughs> I don't know. The coming of the age of the deep sea is very, very evocative of some of the imagery and story of Bloodborne. And I, I say this in the commentary that's lost, but the game, I, no, it's not lost. It's in, for episodes from now, I talk about how the imagery becomes very like Bloodborne as well. We've got like a, well, well you'll see, but I feel like. People like to reject the idea that these are in the same universe or in any way related, but I think... I think there is suggestions that they're in the same universe. So I'm just wiping crumbs off my, uh, my mouse mat. Which, again, shouldn't be called a mouse mat because it's huge. It's like three feet wide, and my keyboard's on it, my mouse's on it, my control's on it. But, I don't know. I often try and ASMR myself because my wife loves it. I'm like, why? He's like, oh, well, it, you know, it, it, they talk about the tingles. I don't get the tingles. But it, it just has to be hearing sounds. I'm like, I hear sounds all the time. He's like, oh, but what microphone tapping? Let's do some microphone tapping. Why do people like that? Also, the, the talking is creepy. not to suddenly scream at you. I would do that. Well, I like the idea of doing that. So let's say you've built up a community of, you know, of ASMR listeners, users, I don't know. And you've done like 200 videos and like, oh, this guy's great, he's really relaxing. And then suddenly they're relaxing, listen to ASMR. And you just put like the MLG air horns, like, wah, 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 wah. and then everybody uh, uh, like dies. They have like, whatever, man. I mean, I'm saying, what could kill you? You'd have a heart attack, but I think it'd be very unlikely for most people to have a heart attack. But I wonder in that case, could you be convicted of that? Like, I suppose if you had a channel specifically targeted towards people over the age of 90. With a nervous disposition, like, oh, all, like, super, like, octogenarians come here, have got very relaxing, soothing sounds to bring down your blood pressure. And you've gained their trust for ages, and then you do that, then, yeah, you may, um, I think they'd struggle to prosecute you. It's probably possible that, you know, you intentionally caused, you did things with the intention of causing harm that led to death. It's not quite the same as stabbing someone, but the, if the intent is malicious, then... I guess it's a crime. Anyway, I'm showing off the gold, uh, no, the bronze, brass, brass armor. Which I really like. But it's too heavy. So, we have to compromise. We debate the armor of the sun again, and we put it on. But look, it's just... It's just grim. It's just a meme. I hate the sun's stupid face. Like someone's drawn it on with crayons. So back to the mirror vest, and there we go. Looking fabulous. Gimp hands and legs, brass face with a blade on my head, and my nice flowy mirror outfit. Uh, where are we going now? Oh, my goodness, brain, could you stop that? So, a few episodes ago, I remember we picked up the... Sewer key? I'm like, oh, we'll go back to that. I probably forgot about it for like a week. 
I've just remembered now. Like since we're doing cleanup stuff, we went earlier to the mimic under the dragon or wyvern or wyvern or drake or whatever it is. Now we're gonna go and rescue a woman. Who? <laughs> Spoiler alert! After I rescue her, I don't talk to her for the next four episodes. So I'll endeavour to try and remember to do that. But yeah. Not much interesting happens. The next episode is like literally an hour long. So maybe the worst day of the game. So I wonder if... Is there any way... I'm just looking at my recording setup. So I'm recording this in a Adobe Audition. While watching it back on Windows Media Player. <laughs> it's not exactly a broadcast level stuff. But as it stands, I don't think there's a way to cut in and out of commentary. Other than just not talking. Just, if I see something interesting, I can talk about it, but... I don't know, it just feels wrong to leave silence. Hmm. We'll deal with that problem when we get to it. Because... Uh, and I will mention this in the next video, but we're going, in the next episode, we go through Ill Illithil Dungeon. And it's the worst area, certainly for me. I think it's the worst area in all of the Dark Souls games and Bloodborne. I just hate it. It sucks. It's poorly considered the enemy. Well, because of one kind of enemy. <laughs> which die really easily, but they have this stupid mechanic, and it just goes on too long, and there's too many locked doors, and you have to go back. Like, the key is way after it, and you have to go back into that stupid place with stupid enemies, and I hate it, and it's dumb. You know, you... If you're watching this, you probably watched my Dark Souls 2 series, and I hated the Shrine of Amana. But I would rather do... Three Shrines of Amana rather than do that place again. Four? No. I'll take the dungeon over doing the Shrine of Amana four times, but it's just, yeah, it's bad. And there's no reward. There's a lot of risk. But all it gets you is the Profane Capital. Which, yeah, there's a Lord Soul there. But it's a pretty small area. I'm also remembering the stuff I missed in the Profane Capital. So I'll have to remind myself in five episodes to go back there and try and get all that stuff. Um, but I don't know when I'm next recording, so I'm probably going to forget. But anyway, if you remember that there's stuff to do in the Profane Capital and I forget, then leave a comment down below saying, go to the Profane Capital and do the stuff you missed. It's not a lot of stuff, but it's just a little bit. There's things to kill, there's people to fight, you know, the usual Dark Souls fare. This, I feel, is a throwback to the Royal Vat Vanguard or Royal Vat Authority. Which is a boss in Dark Souls 2 and an optional PvP area that's stupid. It's not, well, it kind of is a throwback. Because it's very much like this, apart from the statues everywhere, and it's a boss fight. Here I comment on the fact that this guy's very blue. The chest outside Aldrich's boss door was very blue, and I don't know if it's my graphics card. You know, I always seem to have some sort of ending error. In Dark Souls 2, it was the purple glint on my greatsword. In this, it seems to be some things appear a bit blue. I don't know if it's like the certain shaders my graphics card just can't do. Or refuses to do, more likely, as a temperamental beast. Oh, who is that? So this woman is uh, blind. Oh, and she asks you to touch her. So I'm going to use my big, meaty, spiky hoof of a hand. Do a wee touch. My dialogue's boring when you can't hear it. You can hear it, but I'm talking over it, so you can't hear it very well. Man, this <laughs> time passes slowly. <laughs> It's so much more fun to be doing this when you're actually playing. And I'm thinking forward to the next video, which is like 55 minutes that I've got to do voiceover for. I think in that one, I might just stop talking. Because I, I, I could bring that video down to like half an hour. That'd be great. So I'll only talk when I see things. And the rest of it, I'll just put it on like fast motion. You are a champion. 
I've just said that. I'm like, do I support that decision? Oh, okay, yes, you're a rubbish firekeeper. Get on with it, love. But if it would not trouble Places you. to go, people to kill. How long left? Oh, thank you, sweet Three minutes, sixteen. Kid. Three sixteen. I shall take my vows. A famous Bible verse, three sixteen. John, three sixteen, indeed. I think. Swear to serve you. But God so loving the world that He gave His only begotten Son. I should probably know that verse better. It's very famous. I think. It, do you want to make that verse most famous? I think. You've gone and rescued. Oh, Wrestling. Quaint. <gasps> There's a hanging body back there. I am eager. I can probably shoot down. That's probably got something really useful in it. Uh, yeah, so wrestling, they hold up that John 316 sign. I don't know why. I don't know wh whose wrestling persona that's linked to. I was going to say, I should look that up. I'm like, sh should I? Is that going to make my life any better? I'm not really a wrestling fan. So I don't think I'll bother. Here we go. Prepare to feel my fury. Okay, let's turn again. This is purely because I want his mace. Lost it, have you? I gone. As many times as it takes. Yeah, I'm overly willing to take damage when I don't need to. I, I've always said that, you know, if if you're confident of where your next bonfire is, or you know how possibly long the developers will wait to an next bonfire, then you know you can relax. You know, there'll be one eventually. This shield, though, that he gives. Like, the hammer's useless. 50 strength, descaling. Not interested. The shield? Come on, down a bit. Down a bit. There we go. Look at the stats! 81 magic, 69 fire, 76 lightning, 67 dark, and 77 stability. Yeah, look, <laughs> look at this bloody stability. It's ridiculous. These stats are so good. And it's cool. I like the skill. <sighs> I wish it wasn't called Moan. But I think you can use that to... Well, I believe you can probably use it like I use throwing knives. Like, if you're a certain distance, you can activate it through a weapon skill. And um, it will pull enemies towards you. But I, d I don't know. I'm, I will get to 50 strength eventually, probably, because my weapon just keeps getting better and better. And I, I see no reason to fight against that. But, I, I, as well, because it's a, well... Because it's an offhand weapon. I think I'd have to power stance it by holding Y and then do the weapon art. So, I, I don't know. I'd quite like to use that shield. It's very heavy. I'd need more of, um, equipment load, but we'll get to that. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode here. And that's me a few days ago. If you liked the episode, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below saying what you liked about it. If you didn't like the episode because of this stupid commentary, hit that dislike button. And leave a comment down below saying, this commentary sucks, you're a stupid man. I mean, you can't do every single day. So to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's been Strawman Gaming. I'm your Strawman, and I will see you tomorrow.